All right, let's do this. Vikes now, Dustin Baker. This will be the final time you hear from me before week three. So we're breaking down storylines for Vikings, Lions at U.S. Bank Stadium. The Vikings have beat the Lions eight times in the last nine tries. But of course, you only remember the time that they lost, which was their last meeting in a heartbreaker that kind of ended the 2021 season, depending on your interpretation. It was the smoking gun that kind of signified that they're not going to the dance in Zimmer's final campaign. But on the whole, before I get into storylines, the Lions suddenly, at least through a two-game sample size, have a marvelous offense. DeAndre Swift has 10 yards per rushing attempt, which is the second most of all time through a player in his first uh, in the first two weeks of a season. Jim Brown in 1963 and C.J. Spiller in 2012 had more. Nevertheless, Swift is on a grandiose pace. We'll see if these Vikings, who have the 32nd ranked rushing defense per DVOA, can stop the guy who's breaking off the biggest chunk yardage in the world. Not a good mix. But something's got to give. These are the Lions after all, and you'll find out in about, uh, about 48 hours from now whether or not these are the same old Lions playing against your Vikings, or if this is a new hard knocks infused team that's going to make noise. That's the intro. Let's get into um, the the storylines. I got six of them and maybe a seventh at the end is just kind of a throwaway one. But the first major one that I'll be watching for, and hence you should probably too, is Mr. Adam Thielen. Uh, We're through two weeks and he hasn't done much outside of the garbage time damage that he created against the Eagles. Now, in week one, Justin Jefferson was open all the damn time, so it did not matter that Thielen was under-targeted. Nobody cared. However, when you get your ass beat by 17 points on the road and you look like buffoons in doing so, then the fingers start to get pointed amongst fans and pundits like, where's Adam Thielen? If the game plan's not working, why don't you target the guy who is the 11th highest paid receiver in 2022 per cap hit? So, the reason I'm watching, I don't have any reservations about Thielen getting back into the mix. In fact, I think he's going to score a couple times, actually, uh, one of my bold predictions. But, in theory, the guy's 32, and if he doesn't do anything this week or against the Saints in London about a week from now, (laughs) you start to look around and you're like, oh my goodness, has age caught up with the man? Again, I don't think we're there yet. However, it's been very odd that one of the most highest paid players on the roster hasn't done anything meaningful through two weeks. I think that the game plan will target him more. I don't think that the Lions will ignore Jefferson like the Packers did. So I think Thielen will start to get his targets when it matters. And I really haven't decided whether or not his lack of targets through two weeks is because it's a new offense and they haven't figured out that they need to acclimate him inside of it, or if he's just struggled. He said himself he needs to look in the mirror and get open. Um, So something's got to give. If we keep seeing quiet Thielen, that is a signal that things are winding down for Thielen in Minnesota. But I do not think we're there yet. I think he bounces back. I think he scores two touchdowns, and I think Dalvin Cook scores two touchdowns. And if you watched the other show yesterday... I predict the Vikings to win 34-17 in a firm bounce-back effort. And that word bounce-back kind of permeates the rest of my storylines. So get uh, give me a pass on that because this week really is all about bouncing back. On that note, number two storyline is what is the Vikings' defense? What the hell is it? I said with McKinney and Ron and Will Goodwin that When you have the following players, Daniil Hunter, Zadarius Smith, Dalvin Tomlinson, Harrison Phillips, Eric Kendricks, Patrick Peterson, Cameron Dantzler, and Harrison Smith, you should not just be like, well, it's a shitty defense, so they're going to give up six yards for carry. Hopefully they can stop the passing game. Or you shouldn't be like, oh, they're going to game plan to stop the run and give up huge yards through the air. They shouldn't be picking a side every week to take away. They have the players to be a good defense. So if you hired a defensive coordinator that's just going to accept that, no, we can't win with these guys, there's something amiss. 
So, of course, I don't think that's the philosophy in the building, but it sure shit felt like it against the Eagles when they just marched and marched in the first half. Just embarrassing. Oh, man, it was it was real bad memories for me flashing back to when I was a teenager watching Vikings games and the defense was completely a no-name defense. Anonymous Lance Johnstone was the best edge rusher that you had. It really felt like that, but that is not an excuse in 2022 because you've got like seven dudes that could conceivably make a Pro Bowl if they played their cards right. So I want to know, was that just a complete tornado, everything just cruised through in Philadelphia, couldn't get any worse, players played bad, the scheme was trashy, because if we have to accept that the defense is just not good, then this team is not going to win a Super Bowl. I'm a a large defensive-brained football guy, which is why I was behind Zimmer for so long that if if we've just got back to, yeah, we got to win shootouts with this offense-first system, this team ain't shit. They're not going to do it. They will be at a a ceiling, 9-8 and at best. Um, However, again, like Thielen, I don't think that'll happen. I think they just had a bad day at the office. If they were able to stop Aaron Rodgers, they should be able to stop other opposing quarterbacks and offenses. So what is this defense? Does it come back and play well against DeAndre Swift and well against Amon Ross St. Brown? It, it hit better um, because I don't want to be a part of a season where it's like, oh, yeah, they rank 28th in yards allowed, 28th in points scored. And they, don't, they don't stop anybody because, yuck, that is terrible watching <laughs> viewership. All right, that's number two. What is the defense? How does it respond? Uh, on bouncing back, how does Kirk Cousins bounce back? Uh, he's taken a lot of heat this week, rightfully so. He was not good on Monday night, especially in the second half. The offensive line didn't help him. That's no excuse, though. Some of his throws were just head scratchers, especially at the end of the game. The special teams and that maligned aforementioned defense kept giving them little segues to get back in the mix. But he wasn't, wasn't feeling that on Monday night. So I want to know how he bounces back. Because if he has a second poor game, then, like Thielen, something is wrong with Cousins. Now, we've seen this before. Almost every single season, Cousins has one of these games where it's bad, bad. Which is, which is what separates him from Mahomes, Rodgers, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert. Is that his bad games drag the team to the depths of hell. Whereas some of those other bad games from Rodgers and them... Or like, oh, yeah, he only had a touchdown and th- two interceptions and team couldn't get going. For something about Cousins' bad games that feel like he forgot wh- what planet he was on. Uh, so I want to see how he responds historically. He's very good against the Lions. Out of all men in history who have thrown at least 100 pass attempts against Detroit, Cousins is second all-time in passer rating behind Russell Wilson. I think Cousins is 119.2. And Wilson's is 127.7. So I'm, I'm pretty 95% sure the Cousins will bounce back and play the Lions, who have a poor defense, quite well. But it, it would be kind of scary if that lingered, that fourth quarter, where it just looked like an amateur. So I don't want to see that, but I want to watch how Cousins bounce back. In all likelihood, first quarter, I'm sure he'll just be flinging it, and life will be good, but it's actually got to happen first. The next one is, how does the team bounce back from adversity in general? The Kevin O'Connell-led Vikings have never had adversity. Why? Well, he's only been on the job since February after he, checks notes, won a Super Bowl with the Rams. It was a long-ass honeymoon for seven months. And then the honeymoon um, was culminated uh, against the Packers. You know, you beat your foe in your house in the head coach's first game. Everything was blissful. Everything was consummated about the honeymoon with O'Connell and the Vikings. So we took all that momentum, and a lot of you were like, we're going to beat the Eagles, baby. And what happened couldn't be further from the truth. They looked like morons. So I want to know, Thielen talked about looking in the mirror. How does the whole team look in the mirror? Do they say, all right, that game, that ain't us. We're going to step onto the field in Minneapolis and beat the piss out of the Lions. Uh, I want to know... Once they've tasted futility because they did not look good in Philadelphia, are they prepared to say, all right, put that behind us. We're going to stomp out the next team. And you'll get to learn if they do that. I mean, I'll even take a close victory because maybe the Lions actually are good. But a loss would be dreadful. 
That brings me to number five on the storylines, and I stole this from a man on Twitter. And I don't know if he watches this show, but I guess we'll find out his name. His username is Tad, T-A-D-D, and his Twitter handle is ST7 Cubs, like the baseball team. ST7 C-U-V-S. Uh, he had a very apropos point, which I retweeted, and I'm stealing for the show, giving him credit, is during the Lions game and in the immediate aftermath of it when dudes like me and other folks out there are recapping it, this game is the difference between another 8-9 and nine feeling season or O'Connell chasing the postseason in his first year. What do I mean by that? Well, pretty simple, and I think this is what Tad means too. If they win, boom, bada bing. They took care of a high-flying Lions offense, upstart hard knocks HBO team, and they're back in the saddle. They lead the NFC North at 2-1 and one, with their sights set on a Saints team that's relatively beatable on a neutral field. The world will be grand. You and I will be talking at this time next week about storylines against the Saints with the 2-1 and one Vikings and rah-rah. Conversely, if they lose to the Lions then we're going to have to readjust and reevaluate everything because that will mean, nope, this is a true blue coach in his first year that's doing Zimmerish things, probably with an 8-9 and nine win-loss record ceiling. Now, you might say, nah, they can bounce back from 1-2. and two. Of course they can, but this game is at home. If this game was in Detroit, I'd give them a little bit more leeway, but this game is at home. And playoff contending football teams win games at their building. And it'll be loud. They'll have all of us there going haywire. Um, but they must win this game to prove that they're worthy of your super or your playoff credibility. Not getting the Super Bowl. Yeah, get those Briggs pumped against uh, the Eagles. Um, and if they lose, swear to God, I'm banging the drum for it. All right. Well, we're marching down the final... 14, 15 games of the Cousins era because he cannot afford another mediocre season. I believe if that happens, 8-9 or 9-8, basically missing the postseason, the Kwesi Adafamensa will draft a quarterback in April, and then Cousins will either be traded to a team of his choosing or they'll patch him over like Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes. But this game is one of those things I like to call a litmus test. If they're if they're good and they win, that means they are indeed a playoff contender atop the division. If they lose at home to the Detroit Lions, Tad nailed it, then they ain't better than 9-8, and 8-9 eight, eight and on a good Sunday. Finally, and this one is insignificant, but I still find it cool, is they're going to face a familiar face in Mike Hughes, who is their starting nickel cornerback, and the Vikings employed him in 2018, 19, and 20. Mike Hughes played half the time when he was with the Vikings. He was uh, off injured, uh, but then he latched on to the Chiefs, who almost reached the Super Bowl last year, and he played pretty good with the Chiefs, and he, go figure, stayed healthy, uh, but they didn't want him again, so he landed in the NFC North with the Lions. Now, this is, like I said, not a big deal, but if you're a weirdo like me, you like to keep tabs on some of the former Vikings and Mike Hughes, barring some weird weekend injury, will be on the field. And then my final one, those are the big six. Thielen, how he responds. What in the hell is the defense, you know, in general? How does Kirk Cousins bounce back from one of his worst games of the Vikings? How does the whole team bounce back from adversity? Because they have not faced it until, you know, midnight on Monday. Uh, then the, the difference between chasing mediocrity again or chasing the postseason will be revealed on Sunday. And then from uh, familiar face and Mike Hughes to keep tabs on, see how he's looking. Uh, my final one, it's kind of a throwaway one, but the special teams led by Matt Daniels, who's got really cool press conferences and adjectives, they look really good. Uh, they looked good against the Packers, and then they looked even better against the Eagles, but it was overshadowed by all of the rubbish that was on your television screen. So I think they're due for a special teams touchdown. I think that'd probably be my call after I already boldly predicted Thielen to score twice and Dalvin Cook to score two rushing touchdowns. Um, yeah, that would put them that would put them over my projected score, so I'm probably getting carried away. Let me put it this way. In the next three weeks, I think the Vikings will score a special teams touchdown because Matt Daniels has everybody clicking. The punter, marvelous. Greg Joseph hasn't got a whole lot of action. Uh, but he hasn't missed yet. So I believe that the special teams group is run so competently 
so far that they're due from probably a Kanane Wongu touchdown or a Jalen Rager return. And if I'm not right there, then maybe it's a, a blocked kick return for a touchdown. We shall see. So, all right, so my prediction, 34-17 Vikings to get back on track. I did predict the Eagles would win last week, so I'm not just raw Vikings win all every game. Nope. I, I honestly do think that they win this, and then based on how they look this week, I shall predict the Saints. We'll, we'll see how we do. That's all I got. We'll talk to you Monday, recapping this uh, Vikings-Lions game. Skull, baby.